joined by Min Chi Lee, Assistant Economics Professor at the University of Utah. Good to see you, Dr. Lee. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Dr. Lee, currently nuclear energy accounts for less than 3% of China's total power generation. Last year, mm -hmm. China did not approve a single new nuclear power project, but that is about to change in a big way. The China Nuclear Energy Society says eight new nuclear reactors will begin operation this year. And if that does happen, it will mark the largest single year increase in nuclear power production in China's history. So why does all of a sudden the government want to boost nuclear energy growth so drastically? Well, we know that China's economic growth has been very energy intensive. And in fact, China is the world's largest energy consumer as well as the lar largest greenhouse gas emitter, accounting for more than a quarter of the global emissions. And so Chinese government has been working hard to reduce the energy intensity of the Chinese economy. But even with that, China's energy use probably will double between now and 2050. But on the other hand, China also wants to reduce the environmental consequences to meet its climate stabilization obligation. And so China wants to rely more upon nuclear as well as renewable energies. Well, Professor Li, I get it that uh, China is in need of energy. There's the emission issue. But keeping in mind that oil prices have stabilized at historic lows, natural gas is becoming more prolific and certainly cheaper. Does shifting to nuclear power make sense both in China and abroad, especially given the dangers? Well, in that case, I guess the cheap natural gas price is primarily a local U.S. situation. Uh, so natural gas is not exactly a global commodity. So the international gas price is about two or three times higher than the US level. And then about the uh, cheap current, relatively cheap oil price, and that is largely because of the US shale oil boom. And there are some analysts like the uh, Canadian geologist uh, David Hughes who believe that might not last very long. And in fact, the US official uh, Energy Information Administration predicts that the US oil might peak again after 2020. So after 2020, the global gas and oil market might become tight again. All right, so let's assume that 2020 oil and gas are expensive again. But here's the thing with nuclear power, Professor Lee. When things go wrong, they go wrong in a big way, like the Fukushima disaster in Japan. And of course, there are many safety concerns, as well as public fears. And there's usually community resistance. People say, hey, build a nuclear power plant, but nowhere near me. So how can that perception, that obstacle, be overcome? Well, uh, you are very right. And uh, so this safety concern is a serious obstacle. And uh, we know that there was a major uh, nuclear accident in the States, in the United States in the 1970s. And there was Chernobyl uh, accident in the former of Soviet Union in the 1980s. And of course, there was Fukushima. And right now, China has a very ambitious uh, plan to build nuclear power with a long-term plan to build 400 gigawatts of nuclear power plants by 2050. And so that is about four times the current US uh, nuclear power uh, sector. And so uh, with this kind of ambitious plan, uh, the potential safety issue could be serious, especially because many of the proposed nuclear power plants are going to be built in the population centers. And so if something goes wrong, the consequence could be catastrophic. All right, in the meantime, uh, China's got big plans on growing its uh, nuclear technology locally and abroad. There's a joint China-Pakistani nuclear power project in Karachi. China is also negotiating the construction of a Hulong-1 reactor in Argentina. Premier Li Keqiang saying he wants China to become a world leader in the nuclear power industry in the near future. Can this be achieved? And over what time frame is this realistic? Well, uh, I think this is an interesting development. But on the other hand, the international nu nuclear market is not that large. So outside China, uh, the annual building rate may be just something like a few gigawatts a year. And then by comparison, say, the, if we talk about solar and wind market, and now it's on the order of 100 gigawatts annually. And then also, if uh, we are talking about the building of nuclear power plants, it typically takes a very long period of time. So uh, if we take the time of conception, planning, and the building, it could take up to 15 years to build one nuclear power plant. 
So although this is interesting development, and uh, I don't think that is going to be a game changer, and also it's important to recognize that China still depends on the foreign countries for some of the key nuclear technology. And so uh, I, I understand that the Chinese government now has this objective to play a leading role in the nuclear development, but that is going to take time to materialize. All right, so not a game changer in the near future, but certainly something that could happen in the future. We look forward to speaking with you in the future. Thank you so much, Professor Ming-Chi Li, Assistant Economics Professor at the University of Utah.